using the focus brush. A great new feature of Focal Point 2 is the focus brush. It allows you to control your area that's in focus or out of focus by painting. So you can paint things to be sharp or paint things to be blurry. And you can use it with or without the focus bug. For this demonstration, we're going to use it in conjunction with the focus bug. What I want to do is simulate depth of field in this image. Let me turn this off so you can see. We want to keep our subject sharp. She happens to be standing in front of this wall, and this wall recedes from right to left in the background. So the area in the background way back here, we want to have out of focus. We want to have it be slightly out of focus behind her, and then in focus at her hand and through her body. But because her body is in front of something that would be out of focus, we need to use both the focus bug and the focus brush to accomplish this. I'm going to turn the preview back on, and we're going to start out by changing our focus bug from round to planar, and I'm going to position it over the area that I really want to keep sharp in this scene, which is really the area of her hand. So we're going to set it so that the hand is in focus. We're going to use a nice big focus bug with a lot of feather so that the part that is in focus goes out of focus fairly slowly from the foreground of her hand to the background behind. There we go. It's good to toggle the mask on and off so we can kind of double check our work here so we can see how the area of the wall behind the hand is in focus, but it starts to go out of focus right about here. Actually, we're going to shorten things up just a little bit. We really want it to start to go out of focus right behind her there. There we go. We're going to start out and use a lens preset. I'm going to make a Canon 35mm 1.4 lens at f5.6. There we go. Let's toggle that on and off and we can see how that's starting to blur our background. But it's also blurring our subject as well. But it gives us a nice graduation from in focus at the hand to out of focus behind her. Now we're going to use the focus brush to paint focus in on our subject. So I'm just going to select the focus brush. I'm going to scroll my view so that I can see the focus brush controls right here. The controls of the focus brush are brush size, brush feather, and brush opacity. Let's talk about each one of those here separately. The first one is the brush size. And if you look at my brush on screen, I'm just going to make it larger so it's easier to see. You can see the brush is made up of two concentric circles. The inner circle is the hard edge of the brush, and the outer circle is the soft edge of the brush. And as I make the brush bigger or smaller, and I'm doing this off screen using my bracket keys, just like I would inside of Photoshop, I can use the left bracket to make it smaller and the right bracket to make it larger. Then the brush feather controls the feathering of the edge. And you can control that using the same shift bracket keys that you would inside of Photoshop. So at a low feather, you can see how the brushes, those two circles become closer together. And at no feather, it's going to create a very hard edged brush and they're going to be right next to each other. And as we make this softer, you can see how it creates a softer brush. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn off the focus bug for a moment and enable mask view so you can see what some of this actually does when we start to paint. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller and we're going to use a very hard edge feather. And I'm going to set my brush opacity to 100%. So we're basically painting with full amount of paint. So watch, as I make a brush stroke, it's going to have a very hard, full black hard edge to it. As we change the feather, it's going to create a softer edge brush. And if I bring that feather way up, you can see how it creates a very soft, nice transition in the brush. Now the next control is the opacity, and that's basically how much paint we're painting with. So far we've been painting with 100%. But if I bring my opacity down and I paint, you can see how it paints with a softer gray. And if we bring it way down to 20%, you can see it's a very subtle gray. Designed for making very small changes. And of course we talked about the brush size already. I can paint with a very small brush, like this, with more of a pencil line, through a medium sized brush, or a very, very large brush like this. All right, I'm just going to reset my mask by hitting the reset button. There we go. All right, underneath the brush size, feather, and opacity, there's a couple checkboxes for use with pressure sensitive Wacom tablets. The first one is called Wacom Controls Brush Size. When it's enabled, the size of the brush 
will be controlled by how hard you press on screen. So by using a pressure sensitive tablet like this, at a very, very low pressure, it paints with a very small brush, you can see. And as I start to press harder, you can see how the brush stroke becomes larger up to the maximum size of my brush. The other option is called Wacom Controls Opacity. And this is going to change the brush opacity based on how hard I press. So at a low pressure, we're going to barely see it. It's going to paint very light gray. And as I start to press harder, you'll see how it starts to paint with more paint all the way up to when I press the hardest, it'll paint with that maximum brush opacity. This allows us to paint very soft or paint harder depending on how hard we press. And we can actually use both of those controls at the same time if we want to, where it will actually change the brush size and the brush opacity at the same time. So painting very lightly gives me a very small soft brush. And as I start to press harder, my brush will get larger and harder as well. This is going to match the way a real brush works. Most of the time, I use the second option. I just use the Wacom Controls Opacity, and I control the brush size just using the bracket keys on my keyboard. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn the mask back off here so we can see our image. And I'm going to turn our focus bug back on so we can see it. All right, now let's go ahead and paint our subject in. I'm just going to make sure that my brush mode is set to paint focus. I've got my Wacom Controls Opacity turned on. And there's just brush right over my subject. And as I brush, when I let go, it's going to paint those areas in. I'm painting with a pretty large brush for these large areas on the inside. But as I start to get to the outer edge, I'm going to make a smaller brush and make shorter, easier strokes. And I'm probably going to zoom in as well. I'm going to zoom up here to about 50%. Now let's actually zoom up to 100% on our image. Use our brush. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to make sure there's a little bit of feather on it here. And then I just paint right along the edge. Each time I paint, it's going to become more and more in focus. And I'm just going to continue to do this until I get a crisp edge on my subject with no halo around it. And it might take a few strokes just to get it perfect. You can hold down the space bar at any time to toggle between the brush and the move tool. And then as soon as you let go of the space bar, it will return back to the brush tool. There we go. It's a good idea to view your mask from time to time to look for any holes. You can see how there's a few spots on the interior of her body that I missed. So it's easy just to, even in that mask view, to go ahead and fill in those holes. There we go. Let's go ahead and toggle our preview on and off so you can see the difference. There's before and after we're able to change the depth of field in the image in a natural, realistic way. We can even increase that blur amount a little bit. If you made any mistakes, you can simply toggle the mode from paint focus to the erase mode, and you can erase your brush strokes. Now you probably noticed in the brush mode, we also had the paint blur mode. In paint blur, that's for editing on top of the focus bug. If I want to paint areas to be blurry that would normally be in the sweet spot area of a focus bug. And you can toggle between the different paint modes using the X key on your keyboard just like you would toggle between the foreground and background colors in Photoshop. Either paint and blur, erase, or paint focus. Alright, that should give you a good start on how to use the focus brush. To either manually paint in an area or to touch up the shape created by the focus bug.